The 2000s is what I like to call the great transition in music. It was one big interlude. In the 2000s, music was a lot more interesting in my opinion, songs had bridges, music was funky as hell, and artists took way more risk. It was like every artist wanted to bring forth something new, so much so, some of them appropriated other races' identities and cultures. And one artist that got accused of such was Gwen Stefani. Yes, the it girl of the late 90s, early 2000s, the musical icon Gwen Stefani was one of the biggest pirates in the music industry, or so a lot of the woke slash cancel culture community screamed. Don't do it. Don't lock me up. Please. Please. Some of y'all might be too young to know this, but Gwen was lit back in the day. Before Gwen Stefani went solo, her claim to fame was in the rock ska punk band No Doubt. The band's self-titled debut studio album released in 1992 was not a commercial success. Their second studio album, The Beacon Street Collection released in 1995, was more successful shipping over 100,000 copies, convincing their label Interscope to invest into their third studio album, Tragic Kingdom, which was released that same year. Tragic Kingdom was the album that made them a household name, selling 16 million copies worldwide. The album was heavily ska influenced, a musical genre that originated on the island of Jamaica. The album released classic hits like Just a Girl, Sunday Morning, Spider Webs, and one of my favorites, Don't Speak. After releasing their greatest hits album, the singles 1992 to 2003, in 2003, the band went on a hiatus and Gwen went on her very successful solo career. Now Gwen Stefani is known as the ultimate culture appropriating queen, allegedly. Yo, she exudes pure. Christopher Columbus energy. Gwen is her name and Pirates of the Caribbean is her favorite movie. Over there. Gwen Stefani has been accused of appropriating Hindu culture when she wore the bindi. A bindi is worn in Southern Asia and it was worn originally by Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, and Jains. The bindi is worn between the eyebrows and holds significance to religion. Gwen Stefani rocked the bindi on multiple occasions in music videos, on stage, and red carpet events. Gwen did respond, saying she wore it because of her bandmate Tony Cannell, who is Indian American, and it was a symbol of a cultural exchange. Fans and critics have also called out Gwen for appropriating black culture for wearing braids and bantu knots, which originated in southern West Africa. Now, some might say, it's just a hairstyle. White people can wear braids too. Yes, white people can, but don't get upset if someone confronts you or beats your ass because of it. These same hairstyles originated by black people are looked down on in society, but when a white woman or a man does it, it's seen as cool or high fashion. Gwen's been blasted for appropriating Hispanic culture, mainly the Cholo or Chola culture, which by the way is very complex, like it has a lot going on, and its origin is rooted in a whole lot of racism, but the term has been flipped kinda like the n-word as a more positive affirmation with people who associate themselves as Cholos. Wow, I feel like I'm in school right now. The culture is mainly linked to lowriders, tattoos, and drawn on eyebrows brows, which Gwen completely embodied in her luxurious music video. And last but not least, Gwen's Harajuku Girls era. In this era, it's described that Gwen paraded a group of Japanese American women she named the Harajuku Girls. And I am not going to go too deep into the history of Harajuku, so do a quick Google search if you're not aware and come right back. They were in her music videos, red carpet appearances, you get the gist. In a 2021 interview with Paper Magazine, on the topic of the Harajuku girls Gwen Stefani featured and her cultural appropriation accusations, the magazine referred to a 2006 interview with Blender Magazine where the comedian Margaret Cho compared the Harajuku girls to a minstrel show, to which Gwen Stefani replied, if we didn't buy and sell and trade our cultures in, we wouldn't have had so much beauty, you know? We learn from each other, we share from each other, we grow from each other, 
And all these rules are just dividing us more and more. I think that we grew up in a time where we didn't have so much rules. We didn't have to follow a narrative that was being edited for us through social media. We just had so much more freedom. Mm. Google defines cultural appropriation as the unacknowledged or inappropriate adaptation of the customs, practices, ideas, etc. of one people or society by members of another and typically the more dominant people of society. A lot of people and fans' reaction to this is, no, Gwen's not appropriating. She's showing her appreciation. Do I believe Gwen was showing appreciation? Absolutely. And this is just my opinion. To me, when Gwen gets accused of appropriating a group's culture, I have always seen it as positive because for the most part, it doesn't come off as her trying to be disrespectful. But at the same time, I understand where others are coming from because Gwen is white and white people are the most uplifted people in society. Many would agree she might come off as the white savior trope with her parading the Harajuku girls. Gwen Stefani justification for wearing the bindi might not matter as it derives from a group of people and culture that predates yours. Wearing black hairstyles is seen as edgy and sexy on a white woman while the black women who created that hairstyle are seen as ghetto and need to assimilate to society's white standards to get by. You can show appreciation and appropriate at the same time. And I think people don't really understand that. It's literally exploitation as she makes profit when she appropriates slash appreciates. I think we should do away with the term and call it what it is, pirating. Pirating another group's culture for profits. And Gwen is not the only one that appropriates other people's culture. A lot of our faves does it from Ariana Grande, Rihanna, and yes, Beyonce. A lot of our faves should be cast in the Pirates of the Caribbean.